Hey Maya people and welcome. So uh, we're going to do another Maya video uh, because that's what you guys like and that's what I like as well. And today we're going to continue in our topology series. Now I know that a lot of you struggle with proper topology so I'm going to take you through the paces. We're going to start easy with a simple plane and we're going to do a cube and a cylinder and a sphere and make holes in sides of spheres and all that kind of stuff, right? So uh, just to sit back, relax and enjoy the fun. Here we go. So whatever you're modeling, it's always good to understand your topology, your mesh and your edge flow, right? So I'm going to show you guys a couple of examples that occur, especially when people need to create uh, holes or indents or, you know, things like uh, car door handles, uh, fridge door handles and so forth, right? So let's start uh, very basic. Let's uh, begin with a uh, polygon plane and then we'll work towards uh, cylinders and spheres and so forth. So let's take a polygon uh, plane here. My uh, default right now is set to 10 by 10, but it doesn't really matter that much. We're going to right click and we're going to go uh, to face. Then I'm going to hold down the tab key. And uh, I don't know, let's take, uh, let's take these four edges here. So these four, yeah. Okay, let's say I want to cut a hole here. I'll hit delete and I'm done, right? Easy. Now what happens if I hit three to preview smooth? I'll get something that's not a circle and not a square, right? So I'm going to hit one to go back and we'll hit control Z to go back until I have my selection. And let's say I want to have a very nice circle right here. What I would do is I would hold on shift and right click and go to circularize component. Now, when I do that, I get this shape. Okay. Let's see if that turns into an actual circle. Let's hit delete. Let's go to object mode. Let's hit three to preview smooth. And there you go, perfect circle. So why do we need circularized components for that? Why can't we do that manually, right? So we're gonna hit Control Z, we're gonna go back, and this is our starting point. Now let's do that manually. We're gonna go in and let's see, what we'll do is we'll look at these four, right? That's our aim. I'm gonna right click go to vertex and I'm gonna take the vertices that are surrounding that square, if you will, so these four basically, and like four wireframes, you can see it there. And I'm gonna hit R and I'm gonna scale it until we've got something like this. That's basically what we had going on, right? And let me make sure I got one selected so we can see it better. So it was something like that. All right, well, let's have a look and see if that's true. I'm gonna right click the face. And before I delete this, let's have a close look here. We've got a perfect square with four vertices. We've got four here, four here, four here. So we've got no end gons anywhere. These guys as well, they got four vertices, right? So let's hit delete. Let's try that again. Hit delete, we've got a nice hole. We're gonna go into object mode and we're gonna hit three. And there you go, perfect circle. Right, now on a plane, it's not too uh, complicated, right? So I'm gonna get rid of this for a second and let's go in and do something else. Let's take a uh, polygon cube. Now, um, as soon as you start working on a cube, you need to deal with other elements because we got six sides instead of one, right? So let's hit control A, let's go in here and we'll set our subdivision level to, I think uh, six is a bit much, definitely not 16, yeah. We can make that work, right? Okay, so basically the same setup. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna right click at a face, we're gonna hold on the tab key, we're gonna select these guys, shift, right click, go to circularize component. If I want, what I can do is hit control E to extrude, pull this in like so. And then if I go in here and hit three to preview smooth, you'll see that it's a good circle, but you see it's not holding its shape very well, right? So let's look at what we've got going on here. We have structural uh, edges, which are these guys, right? And then what we need is basically a supporting edge on both sides. So we need one there and one there. Now, how do we do that? 
Well, first of all, I'm going to double click on this and shift double click on this. And we're going to take the one down here as well. Yeah, there you go. Hit four just to check whether we've got all of them because I don't think we do. Yeah. So top is selected and then the, not that one. The bottom one is selected. All right. So we've got this selected. What we're going to do is we're going to bevel these. So I'm going to, I got a shortcut for that, Control B, but in your case, it's Edit Mesh Bevel. Yeah. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to set the fraction to 0 0.001. All right. So not a lot to see there, right? But nevertheless, the effect is huge. We're going to go in here, we're going to hit 3. Looking much better, right? But we're still not there yet. We're going to hit 1, we're going to go back, and I'm going to insert some edge loops. So I'm going to go in here, set that to manual, and I'll put one in here and one in here. Okay, Q on the keyboard again. Hit the three to preview smooth. Looks perfect, right? Well, not yet, because looking at our topology here, what we're basically seeing is that everything looks pretty good cube-wise, right? But we do have this guy right here, and this face is pretty good but you know it could be closer to what we have going on in our scene now if you don't necessarily need that exact depth right there what you could do is try to match that up with what you already have so i could right click go to vertex i could uh, drag select these guys right hit w to move that up and kind of snap that now as a result these faces will become much more uniform. Now, that's important, especially when you want to maintain symmetry. But if we now go in here and hit three to preview smooth, there you go, nice and tight. And if you want to hold that shape on the edges as well, right? What you would do is insert edge loop and then go in here and put one in there and one in there and we'll put one in here and one down there. And then we'll put one in here and we'll put one in here and that should basically do it, right? So if we go in here and we go to object mode and hit three, a very tight cube with a hole in it. Okay, now we covered planes, we covered cubes. Let's step it up a notch. Let's go towards a cylinder. Let's close this. Okay, so we've got a cylinder. Now, I kind of hate cylinders and there's a reason for that. We have a whole bunch of faces here that are basically triangles. Now, triangles are okay, especially um, in a situation like this, but we have all of these vertices coming together in the center point. And if I, for whatever reason, decided to smooth this guy out, what you'll see is what that does to your model. It looks funky and it's not good, right? But anyway, let's say this is our situation. And let's say I want to have a hole on the top there. How would I go about doing that? I see people doing the weirdest things, but what we're going to do here is we're going to right click go to face. I'm going to hold down my tab key, select all of these. I'm just going to hit control E to extrude. Now let's tweak the offset to something like that. All right. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is simply delete those interfaces. And what I have left is quads. There you go. Now, if I feel that these uh, quads are too big, what I can do is go back in here, double click, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of push that back until we have something looking more like a square, all right? Control E again, hit R again, and kind of put in multiple layers to create that effect that they're more equal. That's one way to go about doing that. And if I then, for whatever reason, want to extrude this in or out, and push this down for example again i wouldn't do this i would do this and then again and again and again to have even spacing now if we were to hit three to preview smooth this we got the same principle there we need to reinforce that we've got structural edges and we don't have any support edges so i would insert edge loop i would go in here and i would put one on top there i would put one right there i'd put one in here and one down here and then one out here Okay, Q on the keyboard, go in here, hit three to preview smooth, and there you go. 
perfectly tight and perfectly clean. And on the bottom, it's still funky because we didn't do anything there. Yeah. So let's have a look here and see if it looks okay. So from a topology standpoint, we have structural edges, we have supporting edges, we have a proper edge flow. The faces for the most part are square and, you know, look pretty close to what they need to be. Uh, what I could do is go in here and insert an edge loop in the middle there, right? That would help it out somewhat. So if I hit three, there you go. Yeah. Right. So that's a cylinder. Now let's talk about the sphere. Now spheres is a whole different story. If I take one of these spheres and we talked about having even topology and faces and all whatnot, right here, we have a face that is rectangular, right? And then we have one that's basically flipped on its side. And then we have one up here that is completely distorted. So nothing good will come out of this. It's never a great idea to start with this unless you are not, you know, working on detail. Now, if I wanted to have a hole in the top here, that would be fairly easy. I would go in, hold down my tab key, and I, actually, I can actually just go in here and then hit the shift period to extend that. If I hit delete, I have that hole up there, right? Hit three to preview smooth, there you go. Easy peasy. Now, you can see that it's pushing the sphere upward, right? It's not perfectly round. You could work with this. I can go in here, right click the edge, now click on this and hit control E to extrude it, pull it down, for example. And then what I would do is hit G to repeat and W to push down again. And G to repeat and W to push down again, like that. I'll hit a one because I'm still in preview. Yeah. Let's uh, tweak this a little bit. Yeah, I think that's okay. So I got my, <clears throat> excuse me, I got my structural edges. I can then go in here at control I, in my case, to enter the edge loop, reinforce that shape here, reinforce it on the inside, maybe down there. Q on the keyboard, go in here and hit three to preview smooth. And there you have it. Now for the hard one, we're gonna go in here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a new shear and we're gonna make a hole on the side, all right? Now, as I already mentioned, I'm not happy with this top uh, area and the pinching that's going on for a lot of obvious reasons. If I wanted to make a selection here, um, let's say these faces, it's not a square. That's not square either, right? So how am I going to do that? Well, what you would do is you would hit control A and you would go in here and try to create a setup that will look something closer to squares. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we'll go in here, let's leave that at 20, let's set that to 12. Okay, at least here you see that they're pretty square. Now it's not ideal, but we're going to work with it, right? So we're going to go in here, we're going to hold down the tab key, make the selection. Now as before, we're going to hold down shift, right click, circularize component. There you go. We can go in here and twist that a little bit if you want. So let's go to twist and kind of tweak that, put it upright. But already you can see that this is not ideal, but okay, we have that. And we're gonna delete that. Right click go to object mode and hit three to preview smooth. There you go, perfect circle, right? We're gonna hit one to go back. Let's go in here and double click on this. Control E to extrude, W to push in. And here you would have the same principle. So try and keep these evenly spaced. G to repeat last command, W to pull in like so. And then you would have your structural edges and your support edges. So I would hit control I, I would go in here, put one in here, one in here and one around here, but here's where you get your problem, right? So that's where you would do it. That's where you would do it differently. What you would do instead is go in here to edge and you would take these outer edges and you would bevel them, right? Now, that would give you something like this when you smooth that out, <clears throat> excuse me. Now you can see that that section inside is kind of going at an angle 
and if you don't want that you can correct that the best way to do that is to select four faces that are aligned with one of the, these edges that one that one that one or that one but there's an easier way and I'll show you so let's go back in let's take this guy and what we'll do is we'll create a sphere from a cube let me go in here to display and turn my grid on there you go yeah so we're gonna take a cube now what happens when you subdivide a cube we're gonna go in here to mesh and smooth like this we're at subdivision level one but let's go in here and set that to three okay now as we do that you see that we now have face rows that will go all the way in one direction like this or all the way come on all the way in one direction like this now keep in mind this is not perfectly round but it's much better compared to what we were just looking at right I mean especially if you don't see the wireframe if you just look at it like this not too bad now let's go in here and let's uh, create a hole so um, we're gonna go in here we're gonna make a selection right click go to face and let's see I'm gonna hold down my tab key let's do something like this shift right click circle rise components there you go you can twist that a little bit if you like if you want yeah kind of set that up right you can see it's on my grid line there and you can delete that if I then right click and go in here and hit three to preview smooth you'll see that we have a perfect round circle you can then go in here go to edge double click on this control E to extrude W to push in right and I'm in preview mode sorry about that yep and you can repeat that so you can go in here you can hit the G to repeat and then pull that out again and then evenly space that out right if you like now um, once again you can reinforce those edges so what you do with the outer edge here is you would basically double click on that and make sure you have it selected all the way around it helps when I hold on the shift key and not the caps lock that helps a lot actually um, yeah only human and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bevel that 0 0.001 there we go I'll hit 5 for shaded mode not here come on come on 0 0.001 yeah okay I'll hit 5 for shaded mode and then we can go in here and hit 3 to preview smooth and there you go and if you so what we can do is we're going to go in here so we're going to go in here and we're going to take these outer uh, edges here just make sure I'm holding down my shift key not my caps lock makes it a lot easier and we're going to bevel this let's go to 0 0.001 there you go so now if I go in and it's three you'll have a nice edge going on there right okay so basically and uh, just to recap that make sure that your faces are as square as possible um, take notice of your structural edges to make sure that they will hold shape make sure you have supporting edges to hold that shape right so for example in here like that right huge difference if you go in here and smooth this out much tighter line there right uh, of course uh, avoid, uh, avoid end guns and uh, if you follow these rules um, uh, religiously then basically you should be able to model anything now hopefully that clarifies a little bit how to approach that um, if you have any questions as always please let me know uh, it would really help me out if you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you didn't do that already and that said thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time bye